Hi, you can probably still see there's a bit of tinsel uh, left around the house at the moment. It's still just into the new year. We've not taken it down yet. Um, I thought I'd do a little video on making a collapsible or folding buck saw. I've not got one. Um, what I'm going to do is follow Simon the Bloke in the Woods instructions on a video he made about five years ago. Um, I'm going to do it slightly differently. Um, don't need too much equipment. It's going to be a bit rough and ready to start with and maybe I'll hone it down and sand it in a later video. So, uh, unlike Simon, he used ash and ash tends to be used for handles and all sorts of kind of to uh, for tools. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use a, um, a wood that grown, grows a lot locally called the hornbeam and hornbeam is very like beech. Beech can be used for handles and other types of tool uh, but hornbeam is different. It's very very slow growing so historically it's always been used for things like um, cogs and things in mills. It's very hard wearing. I just hope that uh, it's not going to be so hard wearing that I'm going to have to struggle to cut it with a knife or an axe. So that's what this is. So I've got four bits. Uh, this is going to be the main uh, bar, horizontal bar going across. And then I've got two smaller pieces that are going to end up being the handles. Um, the saw blade's obviously going to go at the bottom underneath uh, the horizontal part and then at the top you use paracord or string which you wind um, and you tighten with a wooden winder in the middle. So, yeah, I've bought a 24 inch um, blade from Wix, the local DIY store. Looking at it now, it does look very big. Um, you can obviously get other sizes as well. I think they do a 21 inch, which probably might be more appropriate. So um, this, obviously when it, uh, the idea is that it's all collapsed and folds up into a bag or somewhere easier to store than the actual final um, saw itself but basically it's going to be based on you can't get any shorter than that 24 inches so that and the wood combined in your rucksack is still a fairly um, sizable item that needs to be put away. So what I need to do to start with is just debark some of the time. I'm going to start on a slightly smaller piece um, and I need to batten it up bit like this piece of firewood here just take um, a couple of the sides off to square it up so we're not after a square because realistically if you think about this being a handle it's actually very comfortable in the round um, but I need to take some of the weight off and obviously if we kept it this size it would be a, a massive great thing that it's probably going to be too heavy to use so that's very comfortable in your hand if we squared it off you know, when you're putting pressure on that, each corner, each of those four corners is going to dig into your hands, so it's not ideal. So maybe having a rectangle with the longer side, you know, pointing along the length of the saw and the shorter edges into your hand, with those kind of rounded off, that's probably the better profile to go for. So, so a rectangle. So you're going to take two longer sides off and then two shorter sides. So you can either batten that off with a knife or you can do it with an axe. So um, I'm going to try with the axe to start with. Stir it up, I think. Oh! Mm. Yeah, that's not really working. I think I might have to go to the knife. I might just sit down to do this. Watch out, dog. I can do this at the moment because my wife's away for a couple of days. Uh, so I can leave a few scrapings on the on the floor and the carpet for a while before she gets back. Uh, and by the way, I should say, get well soon to my father-in-law, Bob Potter, who's in hospital at the moment. Um, you'll probably find this video, if you ever watched it, pretty amusing about my lack of woodworking skills. So get well soon, Bob. I should also apologise for the state of my trousers. I don't normally walk around in uh, 
the clothing with half of my uh, body popping out of it, but there you go. So yeah, it's going to take me quite a while, but you can probably see there that the knife is flattening off um, an edge there, but I've got obviously got a mount in the, in the middle. So yeah, if you can properly batten it uh, with a knife at the very start, I think that's probably the quickest way of um, speeding up the process. So what I found was, um, obviously it's not ideal working in your, in your lounge. Really you do need quite a large chopping block if you're to use the axe and I can't really do that in here. Uh, the other thing I've learned is don't do this by an open fire because it's absolutely boiling. Um, the other thing I've noticed is, yeah, as much as I said square it off, because you're obviously reducing the volume of the wood and in, in the end you want a lighter product, but I th what I've just been doing all the time is just feeling it in your hand. Um, see, that doesn't feel quite as comfortable as that to me and there's a slight bulge out into my palm there's a kind of palm swell as if you would have it on a on a rifle stock so you know just little things like that might be a benefit so i think i might retain this as my as the right hand as the main uh, handle that i would use because of it. it's got a slight swelling there so i think i might try and maintain that thickness in the middle and maybe take some of the um the top and the bottom bit off but certainly i'm i'm having to uh, to use the knife more than I am the axe, so um, it's going to take me a bit more time, I think. I'm lucky in that uh, there's only a couple of little knots on this short section I got here, and the hornbeam that I chose was quite a young hornbeam, probably 10 years old, uh, and it's grown quite straight, so it hasn't got too many of these sort of little knobbly side branches on that do produce knots in the longer term. So, yeah, I'm going to keep on nibbling away with the knife and then we'll come back in a minute. Slowly getting there. You can see I ha actually had a, a knot at this end. Um, it's where a twig would have been growing out, a little side branch. Um, and you always get some sort of burring underneath the bark in the, um, in the wood underneath. So uh, whether that's going to make a difference or not, whether I need to cut it down and make it into a 21 inch um, saw, I don't know yet. So. I'm still shaping it, so this is the thing that's taken the, the time, the longer bar. I've done the other two handles um, so it's, and, the, uh, and the twister, um, so it's, yeah, it's just a case of doing this. So yeah, it's getting there, it's getting the shape, and it's not too far off being square, so uh, yeah, I think once I've done this I might call it quits for this evening. Um, yeah, because it's taken a bit longer than I expected. Well, you can see I'm getting there now. These are the uh, widths of the, the two handles, so they're uh, not too far off. So yeah, I've managed to do this one with the axe. Uh, I don't think I've used the knife at all on this, and obviously it's, it takes its time because I'm having to be careful of the, the lounge, the carpet, and other bits and pieces. And now I'm getting to the stage where I've almost got the thickness. I've got to be very careful that I don't kind of <laughs> crack through it now and um, waste all that time and effort. So, 
yeah, I'm quite happy with that so far. Um, another sort of 10, 15 minutes getting the squareness back and the, just making sure that the thickness does match up with the other two. And um, I think I'll call that quits. But what I need to do now is mark out where the tenon joints are going to be. So um, you need to offer up the saw blade so that the outer hole is on the outside of this upright. So I'm just going to keep it along the edge there. That's on the outside. Shuffle this across a bit. Right, now I'm just going to mark on a line there. A line there. Take those two away. Obviously this is excess here, so I'll cut that off in a minute, but what you need to do now is just take that line and that line and draw it all the way around the piece. And now we're going to cut the uh, take the saw and make a cut a few millimetres deep all the way around and then cut off that so the idea is to create a joint that will fit into the upright. The, the mistake I've made is I should have started off with a much thicker round bit of um, wood because what I've done is I've whittled too much away so if you look with that in comparison with the size of my hand it's relatively comfortable in my hand, but given the fact that it's now got to have a tenon joint, I've got to make a hole in there sufficient to put that piece of wood in there. It, it might well weaken the joint, so um, we'll see how this comes out. It might be that I have to redo it and use much wider round wood in order to get that joint nice and secure. But we'll see. It's all an experiment. Right, now I've made that cut all the way around, I've just got to take um, all four edges off that to make it a much smaller rectangle to make that joint. So I'm going to use my knife and gently tap with a piece of wood. So that's the idea, just to gradually whittle it down. But I've got to be careful here that I don't take too much off or the wood splits. Right, so I've made my tenon. It's not particularly neat and tidy at the moment, but um, I'll sort that out in a minute. Oh, dog, get out of the way. Right, so what I need to do now is make the mortise, which is basically the rectangular hole that the um, tenon goes in. So what you need to do is place this the support, not halfway, but slightly above halfway. And we've got to make the, uh, the mortise uh, outline with a pencil if I can get the dog out of the way. So, 
lovely nice one dog And then we need to do the width. And this is where I think I might have taken out a bit much of the handles. So you can see there that there's not that much wood either side of it. So I'm going to have to be very careful where, when I cut this out. And also it looks like there's a knot just there, which is flipping typical. So. Um, not ideal, that's going to obviously, that might enlarge this hole here, let's, well we'll see anyway, see how we get on. So I'm going to use my knife to just cut out this hole. Making sure I'm not going over that edge. Because I don't want that side bit to split. Very carefully gonna take out this longer side. I was trying not to chop my dog's nose off at the same time. I might need a smaller knife now, I think, just to whistle that out. So this is the fiddly bit, this is going to take me a few minutes I think to, to get this out. Right, it's been a couple of days, well, more than that, probably 10 days since I last um, did some work on this, so various distractions. So what I need to do now then, that's that's the frame. Um, what I need to do now is just mark with a pencil where the saw is gonna go and cut a line um, on this upright and then one on the other upright in a straight line. Um, the, the depth of the saw blade, cut that out um, line it up and then put a notch in here 
on both sides basically where I can then put some sort of wooden pin in the hole on the back of the saw blade to stop the saw uh, moving about shifting sideways so that's what I need to do next cut the line for the saw and cut the notch out the back I think for this job I'm going to use my um, pen knife. Basically, I got given this when I was about, I think, eight, eight or nine in the yeah late 1970s, and I've had it ever since and not had any issues with it, whatever. It's one of these simple ones. It's probably got eight different um, things that come off it. But so I'm going to use the saw blade, a little saw blade like that, just to cut the notch for the saw. Right, now I've made my slots for the saw blade to go through, I just need to make a notch now um, where the pin's going to hold the, uh, the blade in place. So I need to make a mark where the hole is, so the saw is pushed in tight, and that's where the centre of the hole is. Then I'm going to cut a notch, a triangular notch this side and do the same over here out here right there you go I've cut my notch out so this all goes there and then all we've got to do is make a pin to go in that hole there and then hopefully it will sit in the notch saw so far, so we put the blade in, made the cut, made a notch at either side, um, all we need to do now is uh, the drill holes at the top which the power cord will go through, uh, or do what we did here and do a notch and these, the power cord will just stay within the notch, the only thing we're doing with the notch is um, when you loosen the shell and take it all apart the string is going to come off and then you're going to have to 
Okay, now I've cut my pegs, just roughly cut two round pegs to put in the holes. And so, goes in there. This one goes in there. And then the notch is going to hold that tight in place when we uh, tension it via the cable. So all I do need to do now is drill a hole in each of the uprights, a hole in the top of the winder and then the paracord is what we're going to put on next. Ideally what you need is a scotch auger, uh, which I haven't got, so I've got a, um, a manual drill built here which I'm going to stick in a socket. Uh, see how this goes, it's way, way too long, ideally I need this part here, the handle here somewhere, so uh, yeah, this might be a bit, uh, a bit wrong. Mm 
Right, come in the wood now to test this out. Let's see how easy it is to put it together outside. saw blade in. And it's just a case of twisting it over. Hear it pinching together. Tuck that in there. Don't know quite whether that's tight enough yet, but pins are in either side. Maybe a bit more. Right, let's give it a go. Right, I think I'm going to keep it a bit like that. Um, it's a bit rough and ready, but certainly usable. Uh, what can I say on it? The only thing I would do slightly differently is choose a much uh, bigger diameter roundwood to start with, because as I squared it off, obviously I've not ended up with a, um, a very thick handle. Um, so there could be weakness there. I don't really know. It depends on the type of wood that you chose, maybe to start with as to how strong it was going to be. With these little pegs, obviously if you lose these you could improvise them by putting a, a twig or something that you found, but 
are quite keen on keeping the hornbeam ones because they're going to be quite strong so what I might do is just get a bit of fishing line um, just put a little notch in the, the top of the pin tie it to that and then tie it around um, the handle um, so that way if it does come out when I take it apart it's going to hang from the bottom of here dangling off a couple of inches um, and hopefully I'll, uh, I won't lose them but yeah there it is folding or collapsible buck saw. <laughs>